midweek racing in the Eastern Cape and we will be racing on Tuesday and the Midweek cards are always quite competitive and this one is no different. Really looking forward to it. 25 to 1 is the off time for race 1. They will be racing over the 1000 meter trip in the Maiden Juvenile Plate for fillies. Here are my selections 7, 5 and 8. So I lead with Silent Observer who in her 4 runs to date has really run 3 decent placings and last time out very encouragingly over her first crack at course and distance ran a good second behind all things nice. That run is going to make her on paper the horse to beat. A horse like number five, La Donna Mia, two fair runs under the belt so far, certainly has room for improvement and already familiar with the poly. I do think that's going to give her an advantage. I definitely expect her in the first three. Number eight, Surfer Babe, is a filly by Time Thief out of a JPEG mare. She'll be having her first run and the yards say that if she's not too green, she can run into the placings. Race 2 over 1200 meters is a merit rated 90 handicap and here although a small field we've really got some standout form with horses like number 1 Tarsus, 2 Blue Duchess and 4 Wolfgang in the mix. I have elected to lead with Wolfgang to take the victory, that's horse number 4, beating number 1 Tarsus and 2 Blue Duchess. Now Wolfgang and Tarsus have previously met the latest last uh, foray together was in the East Cape World Sports Betting first leg of over 1200 meters of the Poly Challenge and on that occasion Wolfgang ran an absolute cracker behind Viking Moon who at the moment is definitely one of PE's more talented sprinters. On that occasion he managed to beat Tarsus home and on that outing is actually better off at the weights to him. So I've gone with that line um, to give me a preference towards Wolfgang and I do tip him to beat Tarsus. Now Blue Duchess, she's met neither of the two horses before and it's really hard to get a line on her as this is the first time she's taking on male company in handicap company. She is in absolutely stellar form though having won all of her recent starts and I do think that uh, working her way right through the handicap she's proved her mettle and she's going to be a huge runner here as well. Race three is a maiden plate over 1900 meters and the maiden plates today, they do look open. 3, 12 and 2 are my selections. I really like the improvement that number three Burnt Horizon showed last time out when running third behind DeMonte. Granted, it hasn't proven to be a really standout form line, but that day he really quickened well and I think more the way he ran his race stands out than where he finished in it. And having his fourth start today, still plenty of room for improvement. I do think he's got a chance at finding the winner's box. A horse like number 12, Kate Battis, her prior form definitely proves she's capable of a lot better than her very uncharacteristic and disappointing last. I think that you can best disregard that and expect her in the mix. Number two, Highway Star showed good improvement last time out when second behind Wiley's tractor over course and distance and a repeat of that is going to see him right there again. Race four is another maiden plate, this one for fillies and mares and again over the mile trip. 8, 3 and 1, my horses of interest. That means I lead with Wild Earth. And although if you go through all three of my first three selections here, they all run off that corsage form line, Wild Earth in her penultimate actually was beaten home by both my second and third selections that day. But I do think it's important to note that she came from the widest draw on that occasion. And with the huge betterment she showed last time out running second behind Sarajevo, who looks to be a very interesting sort, I do think that we can expect better from her. So Wild Earth now drawn the best that she has been in a long while, in gate two I do think is going to really make her presence felt. Number three is Elusive Zoe and she'll be having her second start for the Gavin Smith Yard. On her local and poly debut last time out she really caught the eye. She went out to lead affairs, was only run down late and ended up just over a length off of Corsage in fourth. I think we can see a lot better from her. Also likely race having only her fifth start. There'll be more to come. She'll be more familiar with the poly surface and I do think that she's going to give uh, make a bold bid at the win. Number one, Queen Louise, well, she's knocking at the door. Two of her latest runs, both having resulted in her rounding up as the bridesmaid and by very competitive distances as well. She is drawn in pole position here. She's got a lot in her favor and you know, she wouldn't surprise at all were she to find the winner's box here. She is really trying hard. 
Race 5 is a merit rated 68 handicap, staying over the mile trip, and here 9, 1, and 3 is how I hope to see it play out. Horse number 9 is Zigzag, he could be a little bit of value in the race. He's really run two fair races in his two starts so far in the Eastern Cape, where he raced up a break, could possibly have needed those runs, and they've also been over shorter, 1300. The way that he's rounded both of his races off suggests that he's really going to enjoy the extra here, and I do think that the yeah, Zigzag could be value in the lineup. I'm tipping him to beat number one, Reach for the Line, which is top weight here, or a carded top weight, but with the help of the claim of Jose Ramsay taking two and a half off, he will come down to 59 and a half. And last time, these two teamed up to really win well, beating Falling for You by nine lengths, and that was over course and distance, to which he is very well suited. Again, right up there as far as the weights are concerned, and again, drawn a little bit wide, but I do think that there was a lot to like about that win last time out, and you can't go over overlooking him here. Number three, Mary Lee, a good placing last time out. She does here take on male opposition, but she looks to be regaining momentum. She has she battled for a few starts and is definitely better than that, and she looks to be coming along the right way, so I would include her in trifectas and quartets. Race 6 is the Phillies and Mayor 70 handicap, and here we come back to the sprinting trip of 1,000 meters. My first three numbers here, 1, 7, and 2. I do think that Lady Catherine, although having a hefty top weight of 62 to shoulder, does look hard to beat here. On local debut in her penultimate, she sauntered to a 4 and a quarter length victory over Natural Jade over course and distance, and last time out also over track and trip, although run into second by Victoria Tower, had had it all to do that day, jumping from gate 14 out of 16. Drawn so much better here in gate 2, I think that she's going to be the horse they all have to catch. Number seven, Escape to Vegas, is as honest as they come. She'll be doing her best work late. She's drawn well in a steady form at the moment, and it would disappoint if she were not to find the first three. Number two, Umbra is a horse I am taking a chance on. A quick glance through her form proves that she has taken on stronger. Though she has dropped in class and dropped in rating, she's not really yet come to the party. I do think, though, that this is a race where she can swing it all around. She's very well suited course and distance, and she is worth including. Next up will be race seven and sprinting again, this time over 1,200 meters, though. It's a merit rated 78 handicap. The... First horses to catch my eyes here, one, two, and seven. So leading with Regimental to beat Vaz Boy, and then including the likes of number seven, Chainsaw. Regimental's on a streak at the moment. He races off the back of a hat-trick of victories and is really putting his feet in all the right places. The Yard are confident of another good run from him, and even though he does shoulder the top weight here, he is a course and distance winner. He's only had one start in the poly, but he, he romped home last time out when beating Chainsaw by length in three quarters and I do think he can do it again. Number two, Vaz Boy, however, does deserve the utmost respect. This fellow took on a lot stronger last time out and also did a fantastic job in finishing fifth behind the very useful Earth Hour despite being out of the weight. His prior form in this type of division has been really solid and he's also a horse that enjoys track and trip. So Vaz Boy does look to be the horse that Regimental will have to beat. Number seven, Chainsaw, is the horse I'm going with for third. And last time out, he really did drop the ball when finishing eighth behind Salele. But it's his penultimate run that grabs the attention. And on that occasion, he finished second behind Regimental over track and trip. I do think that uh, better off to Regimental today at the weights, he can get a look in here, drawn in gate two and carrying only 52 and a half kilos. Last of the day is the Phillies and Mayor 66 handicap. They're notoriously open, and this one is no different. 4, 3, 9, they will be my first three numbers. Rimini, I think, is coming along the right way. In her local debut was on turf in her penultimate. She ran a fair fifth, and last time out on poly debut, she really ran on well, over 1,300 to finish fourth behind Radiant Love. The yard do believe she's coming to hand and drawn well in gate four. They are expecting a good run. Number three, Nubal, ran a decent three and a half lengths off of Elusive Jade last time out, which was a follow-up on her second career win. She's a horse that's always there and thereabouts and can be there again here. Number nine, Paris Opera. A lot to like about her run last time out. It was her post-maiden effort, and she finished up 
only three lengths of Valeriana, having made up a lot of ground coming from almost seven lengths off with 400 to go. She really does seem to enjoy the poly surface. She's drawn neatly here, and I think we should expect even better from her. I do think she can get into the mix. First leg of the PA will get away in race two, which is the merit rated 90 handicap over 1200 meters. And a small field here, I really do feel that the numbers of one and four, Tarsus and Wolfgang, will be enough to get us through in the, the small field, I'd be disappointed if these horses didn't find their way into the first three. And I think the two here are more than enough to get us through. On to the second leg of the PA, and this is a maiden plate over 1900. I think that the maidens this afternoon are quite open. I have gone wider with the three numbers here. All of my first three selections, number two, Highway Star, number three, Burnt Horizon, and towards the end, number 12, Cape Battis. Race four, another maiden plate, this one for the fillies and mares, and again, also electing to play it safe and go a little bit wider. My first three selections going in here as well. Number one, Queen Louise in really steady form. Number three, Elusive Zoe, he's got plenty of room for improvement. And number eight, Wild Earth, who is coming along the right way off a good second last time out. Race 5 is a merit rated 68 handicap, and this will be leg 4 of the PA, also going a bit wider here, 1, 3, and 9, reach for the line, races off an emphatic victory last time out, number 3, Mary Lee is starting to regain form, and I do think that number 9, Zigzag, is a horse that can pop up to make his presence felt here, so I have included all three of those. Moving on to race 6, and here... I do think that a horse like number one, Lady Catherine, is going to be the horse they have to beat. I can't see her missing the first three, and as such, she is a PA banker for me. Likewise, moving on to race seven, I stick with the banker of the number one horse again, Regimental. And in the penultimate leg of the PA, he will be a banker. The last of the day, always a very, very open affair, and always safer to go a little bit wider. And horses three, Nubal, four, Rimini as well as nine Paris Opera and 10 in full bloom are all horses I will include in the last leg of my PA. We flip back now to race three to get started with the pick six. And the numbers that I included for the PA are most definite inclusions and they are Highway Star, that's number two, Burnt Horizon, number three, and Cape Battis, number 12. Added to that, I'll bolster with number one, a slightly Spanish who I do think is better than his local debut may suggest. Number four, King's Fort, who the yard feel going to love the extra here, as well as the likes of number eight, Go Ahead, who will be trying the blinkers, and the yard do think he can be effective here. Moving on to race four and the PA numbers, one, three, and eight. I add to them with four and six for the pick six. Number four, In Between Dreams. She's really not disgraced herself in her two local runs so far and drawn well enough in gate four. She is capable of upsetting. Likewise, for number six, Red, White, and Blue, her penultimate was very poor and uh, very disappointing, but she showed signs of improvement last time out behind Madame Seville. It's a form line that has held up well, and the yard are expecting a good run from her, so I do think we need to respect her. Race five will be the third leg of the pick six. PA numbers one, three, and nine go in, and I add in at number two, Capernaum, who registered his second career victory last time out. He has had a period of uh, a little bit of erratic racing in between, but he bounced back to best in his penultimate and then last time out. The yard have always believed him capable of better, and he is a course and distance winner, so really not harshly treated for that win last time out. He could well be there again. Number eight is Frankie Two Shoes, and he put his poor penultimate behind him, came back with a much better effort last time out. He's a horse that is overdue to find the winner's box for the second time, and as such has to be included. Race six, number one, Lady Catherine, my PA banker. She'll be my pick six banker as well, one of my pick six bankers. I do think that she is drawn a lot better here, and although having that top weight to carry, is going to be good enough to get it right here. Likewise for number one, Regimental. Utmost respect here for number two, Vaz Boy. He is most definitely the horse to beat, having dropped in class to race here. Regimental, however, is in a very good vein of form, and I do think he can go on to make it four on the trot. Last of the afternoon, and I really round up 
trying to cover all bases. The PA selections of the four horses, three, four, nine, and 10, will go into my pick six and added to that, horses five, Natural Jade, who was a good winner over 1,200 last time out. Number six, Quick Wit, who's been thereabouts in both of her local starts so far. And then over to number 15, and that is Silver Fountain, who can do a lot better and is well suited to course and distance. Our horses, I do think, can get a look in, and as such, I have decided to include them. The jackpot sees me stay with the bankers of Lady Catherine and Regimental in its last two legs. And as far as the first two legs of the jackpot are concerned, I've then decided to take advantage of having the bankers and perhaps hope that something a real roughy pops up. So I've gone field in the first leg of the jackpot, field in the second leg of the jackpot. I have then banked number one Lady Catherine and banked number one Regimental to end up. That brings me to my best bet and value bet of the afternoon. My best bet will be in race seven. It'll be number one, Regimental. I do think that he's got a good chance at making it four wins in a row. And my value bet will be in race five, number nine, Zigzag. I think that he's done enough over shorter to suggest he'll enjoy the 1600 and having his peak run as far as fitness is concerned, he'll be spot on for a big effort. Thanks for sticking with me through a breakdown of racing for Tuesday. I hope you all have a great afternoon racing.